simultaneous equations. How do we approach it? Well, the most common way is we need to eliminate a variable and then we go and solve the equation for the other variable and then finally we substitute back in to work out what this variable that we eliminated are. Known as the elimination method. Who comes up with these names? I have no idea. What a genius. Let's just do a simple example here. So we've got two equations, two pronumerals, we want to find what they are. Not something I'd necessarily write down, but we're going to multiply the first one by two and the second one by three. Why do that? Because we want to make the coefficient of one of these pronumerals the same. Well, whether it's plus or minus doesn't matter, but the actual magnitude of the number the same. That allows us to eliminate, because we can say, well, all right, let's do a subtraction and the y's go away. And I'm actually subtracting up, so I get a positive 11x and that becomes negative 33. There's x equals negative 3. Substitute back in, again, something I may or may not write down depending on how complicated the substitution is, and we get y is equal to 9. I then conclude it. It should not be up to the reader of my solution to go searching for these answers. Oh, x is negative 3 is over here. y equals 9 is over here. No, no, put them together, make it clear. Here's our final answer. x is negative 3, y is 9. But also note how I've written it. I've written it that way. We don't assume they're talking about coordinates, and obviously we use this technique to find the point of an intersection of two lines, but if that's not what we're being asked to do, no, no, it just happens to be that these pronumerals are called x and y. I mean, they're not necessarily coordinates. Of course, that technique does not work for something like this, because theoretically we've actually got four different pronumerals here. Because x squared is not a like term to x, and y squared is not a like term to y. So the elimination method is not going to work, and that's where we do it this way instead. I'll make y the subject in one of them. Well, it didn't have to be y. I, I could have made x the subject, but it makes more sense to make y, because I've only got one y. It just makes life easier. So y is 14 minus 2x, and then we substitute it into the other one. Now, whilst I still have two different uh, terms, at least what we've got is a quadratic, and we know how to solve a quadratic. Okay. Ooh, does 3 go into everything? No, 3 does not go into 502. I'm reading it backwards. 3 does not go into 205. Of course, I know that because... How can I just look at 205 and no, 3 doesn't go into it? Yeah. Some of the digits are 7, and 3 doesn't go into 7. So, All right. But it does factorise. We get 3x minus 41, x minus 5. We have two possibilities. Well, let's find the y for each of those possibilities. And we get y equals 4, y equals negative 40 on 3. This one, of course, is very important. I write a final answer down uh, because look, which one goes with which? Again, it's not up to the reader of my solution to work that out. I should spell it out for them. Okay, when x is 5, y is 4. And when x is 41 on 3, y is negative 40 on 3. So it's very clear which one goes with, with which. It does not matter if we've got more than two pronumerals. We can still use this idea. Any time we have the same number of pronumerals as we do equations, and assuming one of those equations is not just a straight multiple of one of the other ones, so we have three different equations, then it should be possible to find the value of those pronumerals. A little bit of patience, we can do it. Okay, I'm going to have to eliminate a variable. So I, I do it in pairs. I pick two of the equations and eliminate a variable, but then I'll pick another pair and eliminate the same variable. So what did I do? I decided to multiply the first one by two and then match it up with the second one. So now the x's I can eliminate and we get rid of the x's. There we go. Now I pick another pair. So I'm going to multiply the first one now by four and match it up with the third one this time. And now the x's will eliminate again. I now have two equations, but I have two equations, two pronumerals, simultaneous equations. I'll go again. So now I've got 7y minus 6z, but I'll multiply the other one by 3, so 18y minus 6z. I can now get rid of the z's. We know what y is. It's now just a matter of working backwards and getting the other answers. So sub in, we get z is 4. Now I know z, sub in, and I get x is 3. Bingo. We have our solution. x equals 3, y equals negative 2, z equals 4. Again, we're not necessarily talking about coordinate geometry here. 
Uh, so this would be a point in a three-dimensional space if we were. It's still the same thing. Where do three lines intersect at a common point? That's what we would have just found. 1G. That's going to do us for today.